So this video is going to discuss how we use the um, XCP Aura Bar and Ring Kit. So this is in addition to your bite blocks. And so the equipment that you'll need to have with you to be able to complete this performance evaluation is going to be your um, ring and your bar and your three colored bite blocks. And you'll notice on the ring that they are um, marked with specific colors and those colors correspond to the color of your bite block. And then when you're looking at your bar, you're also going to notice that the prongs on there are color coded, which also is in correlation with your bite block. So when you're putting this instrument together, you're going to want to make sure that you're using the correct colors um, that correspond to the correct colored bite block. What we're going to talk about today is putting together the bite block for the anteriors. And so the first thing you'll have is your bite block that you're used to and you're going to get your bar. On the bar you'll notice that there is a blue prong and a yellow prong and that's what you're going to put um, inside of your bite block. Um, we want you to line up the prongs at the very um, anterior portion of the bite block. So what you'll do is you'll slide it all the way in where it's nice and snug and that there's no space. Um, and the next thing you'll do is you'll get your ring and you'll notice on your ring there's a blue marker and that's the one that you're going to use to be able to line up the bite block within the circle. So that blue marker is actually going to slide on the very end of this um, bar. So you're going to take it and you'll probably put it on there first and realize, hey, my circle's down here, but my bite block is up here. Well, that means because you don't have it, you know, lined up correctly. So what you'll want to do is just make some adjustments, maybe flip your ring, because what you're going to want is for the ring to house your bite block. So you should be able to see within the circle the blue bite block. So if you can, then you have it lined up correctly. Um, the next thing you'll do is get your sensor, and this is our size 1 sensor, Gendex, and it's got a size 1 um, cover on it. And on this, you're going to put the word Gendex inside the bite block, and so you're going to slowly put it in that bite block, make sure it's nice and secure, and you should be able to see that in the circle. Um, so if you can see your sensor, then you know that you've got it lined up correctly, which this one is. So now that we've got our ring and our bite block and our bar all connected, it's time to position it in Dexter's mouth. And so we're gonna work on the maxillary central incisor projection. So what you'll do is you're gonna line up your bite block exactly how you've been taught and how you've been performing it. Um, and you'll have Dexter bite down. So what you'll notice is you've got a ring and a bar that's sticking out. And the bar is actually really great because it's gonna be your vertical angulation. So we were using cotton tip applicators to be able to identify our vertical angulation because we didn't originally have a bar. So now we can use the bar for the vertical angulation. Um, the ring is also gonna be really helpful because we'll be able to line up the tube head within the ring so we won't have any comb cuts because the sensor is inside the ring. So that'll help a lot. So what you'll end up doing is positioning your tube head where the circle matches up with the circle of the ring. And you can use the bar that's located actually on my side um, to provide the angulation that you need for your vertical. So you'll want to make sure that the bar um, is parallel to the um, tube head and we will show you what that looks like. Okay, so we'll want to use this bar as our indicator and we're going to want to line it up to where it's parallel with the line on the tube head. And so if you can kind of make it look like two parallel lines then you know you've got the correct vertical angulation for your image. So once you've got your tube head lined up, um, you're going to be able to expose this image. Ideally, we want you to push the ring as close to the patient's face um, and push the tube head as close to the patient's face. Our ring is a little long, our bar is, so we tend to hit the tube head, but ideally we want it as close to reduce the surface area of exposure. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the size two periapical receptor and our ring and bar and how we assemble this. So again, you're gonna grab your bite block and your bar, and then you'll notice on the bar, there's a blue and a yellow peg. 
we're obviously using the yellow peg. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is line up that yellow peg to the most anterior portion of the bite block. So you're gonna, again, insert it and make sure that it's flush with the bar itself. And then we're gonna utilize the ring, and this time we're gonna use the yellow portion of the ring to make sure that we have the ring lined up with the bite block. So you may put your ring on, and it looks something like this. And you'll notice that the ring is not showing the bite block. That means your ring is not put on correctly. So you'll wanna make some adjustments. And to do that, you'll just flip your ring. And now you can see that the ring and bite block are within the same plane. So therefore, you know if you put your tube head here that you'll be exposing that sensor. So you'll wanna make sure when you're putting your bite block and your um, bar together, um, depending on which projection you're working on, which today we're going to be working on the maxillary right um, premolar periapical, we don't want the bar to come on this side because if we were to place this in the patient's mouth, the bar is actually going to prohibit you from being able to place um, your bite block in the right position. So you'll want to make sure that the bar is coming out of the patient's mouth. So you'll wanna make sure when you're lining up that it's coming out so when you're placing your um, bite block that you'll be able to acquire that projection. Um, and same thing with the sensor. This is our size two Gendex sensor and we have a size two cover on it. You're gonna to wanna to place that in the bite block with the cord coming out. And make sure it's nice and snug and centered in the bite block like so. So we've got our bar coming out of the mouth and our um, cord coming out of the mouth. So those are really good. And you're gonna place this, if you can get, there you go, um, inside the patient's mouth, like so. Now this obviously is our premolar projection. We're gonna move the ring as close to the patient's face as possible. And then you'll notice we've got our uh, bar that's indicating our vertical angulation. So that'll help us when we're trying to line up our tube head. So when we're trying to line up our tube head with the bar and ring, we can see that the bar is giving us that vertical angulation that we need. So it helps us line up where our tube head needs to go. So we're gonna take our tube head and make sure that we um, place it as close to the ring as possible. And then we're gonna use the bar as our vertical alignment. And so you're gonna make sure that this line and this line are parallel to one another, which it pretty much is. Um, and you're gonna follow the same guidelines that we've taught as far as our premolar placement um, with our horizontal angulation, but the bar is really helpful to help us with the vertical angulation. So this would be your projection for your maxillary um, left, is it maxillary left premolar periapical. Um, the thing about the SAS2 posterior projection is um, the way that this setup is, is you're able to do your premolar and molar on the left side, and then you should be able to flip your instrument without having to make any changes to be able to complete the premolar, on, premolar and molar on the left side. This is a right side, this is the left side. Thank you, Ms. Weaves. Um, without having to make any adjustments to your instrument. So you can do projections on this side and flip your instrument and do the mandibular projections of the opposite arch. And again, the vertical angulation is gonna give you, um, the bar is gonna give you that vertical angulation. So when you're lining your tube head up, you'll line it up. Um, with the bar and the ring. So this is the patient's left mandibular premolar periapical shot. So you can see we use the bar for our vertical angulation and it's parallel to the line on the tube head. And we have the um, tube head as close to our um, ring as possible. And we're gonna still follow the guidelines for placement of our horizontal angulation with what we've been um, previously taught. Um, and that'll be that projection. Okay, so this is the mandibular left premolar projection. And sometimes students tend to take this instrument and just jump straight up to try to do the maxillary left premolar projection. And when you do that, you can see that the bar is actually going towards the posterior portion of the dentition and the cord is not coming out of the mouth. So you have to flip your instrument when you are working on the same um, side of the mouth with your size two 
receptor. So how you do that is you're gonna remove the bar, flip it to where it comes um, out of the patient's mouth. You're also going to remove your sensor and flip it to where it is also, the cord is coming out of the patient's mouth. And then you can see that your ring is not lined up with the bite block because this is where it originally was. So what you have to do is flip your ring. So you'll take your ring off, flip it, so you can see the, the sensor inside of the ring and now you're ready to do your maxillary left premolar projection. So then you'll line it up like we have taught. You can tell that the bar is coming out of the patient's mouth, the cord is coming out of the patient's mouth. So you'll be able to move the ring far down on the bar and then use your tube head and line it up using the bar as your vertical angulation and of course using the same horizontal placement that we've previously taught. So when you're working with the ring on the maxillary left projection, you'll see we've got the tube head lined up as close to the circle as possible. Our horizontal angulation is in point and we also have our vertical angulation and we make sure that the tube head is parallel to the bar that's showing us our vertical angle. So now we're ready to use our instrument with our bite wing projection. So you're going to need your red bite block and your bar. And again, you'll see you've got two pegs that are red. So that lines up with the red bite block. And so what you'll do is you'll place your bite block with the portion that the patient bites on towards the longer portion of the stick or the bar. I haven't called it a stick this whole time. And um, then you'll use the red portion of your ring to line up um, the tube head. So you'll use um, the red portion onto the bar and you'll see that you can see the bite block within the circle. So that makes it really easy when you're trying to do your bite wing projection. When you're trying to do your bite wing projections, this portion of the bite, um, no, not bite block, this is the stick. <laughs> the portion of the, um, bar why do i call it a stick still hee <laughs> anyways the portion of the bar is going to be coming out of the patient's mouth so you'll use your size 2 gendex sensor with your size 2 um barrier on it and then you'll place your sensor inside your bite block making sure that it is centered inside the bite block and that you can see um, through your ring um, the sensor and you'll want to make sure that that cord is coming out of the patient's mouth. So when you're trying to do your bite block projection, bite block projection, bite wing, this is not, um, you're going to line it up exactly how you've been taught. So you'll line up your premolar projection, have the patient close, and you'll see your bar comes out pretty straight, which is good. Um, and then you've got your ring as your um, guide to be able to place your tube head. So you'll make sure that your tube head is at zero degrees. We don't go plus um, five degrees any more than plus 15. Um, so you'll take your tube head and you'll line it up with your ring and you're gonna use the same horizontal placement that you've been previously taught and make sure that your tube head is as flat as it can be because we don't want any vertical angulation. Okay, so we were talking about using the bite block for um, your uh, bite wing projection. So this is our premolar bite wing projection and so we wanna make sure that the bar comes out of the patient's mouth pretty flat. We don't want it to be steeped in any way because it's a bite wing so it should be at about a zero um, vertical angulation and then we want to push the ring as close to the patient's mouth as possible and then we line up the tube head using the same horizontal um, landmarks that we've taught previous and so when you have all this lined up you'll be able to exit and expose and you should get a really great image um, of a bite wing.